In this tutorial, I'm not going over how to make a follower because there are many others about it. Either way, for the collision, each side of the character needs collision. Therefore, we need one trigger zone for each side of the character. Let's create that now. And make sure to tag it with whatever your environment is tagged with. I have not created one, so I'll create one soon. Do this for all four sides and simply connect it to the clamp that we have. Now we have these plates, simply connect them. And now we have our collision box. Similar to the normal follower, we'll need piston gizmos. Due to this being resettable, you're going to want to hit configure on the gizmo and make it so that way it can move to target. I like to have my acceleration time at 0.5 and travel distance at 999999, being seven nines. Do this for each side. Now for the collision, make sure you have one gizmo above each one but have it facing backwards. Also do this for each side. Next, let's make sure it can have gravity. So now have another piston. Have one facing up and one facing down. Next, simply connect them all and then have the final one connect to the body of the clamp. If done correctly, everything should be one object, and you can grab it all at once. If so, you may now continue. Let's get the gravity trigger zone. What I like to do is get under the AI and simply build a, about a 3x3 three three and make it small enough that way it can't just climb onto walls. Once that's done, tag it, that way it only sees the tag of world. I recommend centering this. From there, connect this to the clamp. Now, we need to make sure that all of these have the correct speeds. So now what you want to do is get four combinators. For each of them, we're going to be using the reset function. That way this thing is able to respawn. Now set each speed. First, I'm going to have my gravity speed at 1000. I also recommend having a quite high acceleration time on these, the gravity. For now I'm just going to do a plane 5. A walk speed of 150, a collision speed of about 550, not 55, 550. And from there you want this to be 999999. Now connect your gravity speeds to the green on both of these, just the two top. Your walk speed on just the gizmos facing outwards. Oh, wrong one. And then you want your collision speed to be on the ones facing inwards. Once you have that, connect the 999999 to every single blue tab 
on all the gizmos. This is so that way we can reset it. For the gravity speeds, feel free to have a different speed for each one. It's very useful if you're creating something like a custom vehicle. Make sure that these are done. If you have this done correctly, all you should see now are little red zeros by each of the red pins on each gizmo. Each side of the AI to have collision. I'm only going to show one as the process is the same for each side. So first, you're going to need two booleans. One and, and one or. So what you must do is, since I'm doing this side, I must first set this green for the collision to be to another or I missed one, sorry. Either for the collision, there's either something here or the AI is resetting. This is very important. What we also might want now is to place our or, which is for the reset of the AI. Set this to each input reset pin on each of the four combinators or five depending on your situation. Now that we have this, this will auto reset. If this is resetting, also have the gizmos enable. You will be doing this for every single gizmo. Now, we're also going to need when there is nothing on each side. It'll allow it to move. So when there is nothing in the way, and the AI is looking this direction, so what I need to do is scale down, find the trigger zone that I need, which is actually over here for some reason. It'll allow it to move. And that will power on the gizmo. It's also powered on if it's resetting. And now, connect this to the power supply up here. Connect the collision power supply to the ore that we set up down here. I will be right back as I must do this for each side. When you open your palette, go to settings and hit play gizmos. It should start following you. And if I scale up, it should not be able to go through anything tagged with world. Now you have basic collision on NPC follower. Now, let's move on to gravity. I've added a floor, that way we can test out the gravity. Also, a bit of a ramp. First, let's make sure power's on. For each of these ore booleans, it powers on the correct gizmo. Since this goes up, we need to make sure if there is floor below, being if they're standing on something, or if the AI is resetting, power it on. And then using the not, we can make sure if there's nothing there, or if it's resetting, power's on. If done correctly, you should now have some proper gravity for your AI to be able to use. Simply climbs up, and falls down. This can be really useful when trying to create all kinds of things, like enemies. Next. Let's show how to reset your AI. All you need to do is have the power source come in from this chip. So let's get a button. It's in props, dynamic, and you can get the button. Let's have it so that whenever you press the button, it'll reset the AI. So let's play Gizmos, have it move to wherever our controller is being the sword, and let's reset it and it auto resets. This is why we use the combinators. And now you have a very simple version of AI or an NPC follower with collision and gravity.
First, you'll need another piston. And you'll also need another combinator. Set the speed of the jump that you want. And connect the speed to the green. Connect the blue, being the target distance, to our little one down here. Always make sure that this one resets when the AI is supposed to reset. We also have a bit of a state machine here. Hit configure and make sure value one is set to a one. Next, let's tell your AI when to jump. Spawn in the boolean and set it to or mode. Value one can go up here while the reset goes over here. And have that connect to your power supply. Next, let's show your AI and how and when to jump. First, let's get a delay chip. Open your palette as always, other, and delay. I'm going to have my AI jump for two seconds at a time, so let's put a 20. Now let's get another boolean, so we can just call in the one up here. Set it to or. So, have it so whenever it enters the jump state, it will simply just start the delay. Once that delay is simply started, when it ends, it'll know to just stop jumping. And what we need to also do is make it so that way with this, if there's something above it, so have another triggers on here, it'll also not jump. Make sure it only detects world when it needs to. First, go back to our simpler follower and add a smaller top layer. This will be very useful. Let's get another and. So we have an or here, change it to and. So first of all, we have to check. Is it looking up? So when the AI is looking up, it can start to jump. That is the simple version. Although this can also cause bugs. Let's see how to fix them. So we have our gravity triggers on. Let's make one that's a bit bigger than that. Although I would still recommend doing a 3x3. Three three. Make sure it goes down farther. Objects tag it with your environment, being miner's world. From here, make sure that it's connected to the clamp. Now what I recommend doing is using this green tab and setting it to the end. Now it'll only jump when it's looking up and it's on the ground. Because the gravity is a bit smaller than this. This can also effectively allow for a double jump. Fiddle around with a few of the values, and at one point, you'll have the perfect follower and PC. Boing. From here, you can do what you like. If you stop gizmos, you can attach an AI character, or something like that, to the gizmo right here, being the clamp, and do whatever you want with it. Have fun!